Did you find yourself feeling um, influenced by what was going on? Because you really, all along, have have marched to your own drum and and um, walked down the aisle alone. No, I never thought that. I uh, I know <coughs> that uh, I was breathing the same air that everybody else was breathing, and you you couldn't help. But me. you stuck with the landscape, is what I mean. Stuck with the landscape. I tell you what happened to me in. Uh, 1963 in Italy, I was uh, trying to paint a painting that would um, be a modern day version of Van Gogh walking to, to, the, to, to do his landscapes. You know, he had his hat on and he's carrying a, a paint box and had a canvas strap to his back. And I thought I would do that on the, in the Italian landscape where I was at that point living. I kept moving the figure. First it was here. Then it was there. And then finally I put it over here, you know. Then finally I painted it out all together over the course of a whole summer. Well, um, as soon as I painted the figure out, I was happy because I felt free, you know. I felt free of all sorts of obligations that were inappropriate to the way I was painting at that time. Like to paint a figure in a landscape, what should that figure be doing, you know, aside from being Van Gogh, you know. So, um, you know, uh, what was ha happening actually in my surroundings, there were tractors and there was plows, uh, uh, you know, uh, being pulled by the tractors and so forth. And I didn't feel like painting a tractor, you know. In fact, my painting doesn't lend itself to tractors particularly. So um, I was forced to become a landscape painter for, for, for lack of any, any other impulse, you know. But I. I mean, basically, I'm, I'm a painter. What I care about is, is, is what colors do to each other and what brush strokes do to each other and what edges uh, to use on things and so forth, which have nothing to do with being either a landscape painter or a figure painter or a still, you know. I was, I was really, I still am, I have the same idea. And I don't have to, I don't like very much to have to think about what subject to paint, you know. Because the more you think about the subject, the stiffer your painting gets, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't want to paint any more bright colors because I thought, uh, I, you know, I was too influenced by other people when I was painting bright colors. So I went into these monotone type paintings, like this one over here, you know, which is all grays, going from, from dead white to the darkest gray uh, that isn't black. So. And, and, and the way to do that is to make a row of trees, tree trunks, with the spaces in between, such a way that the eye moves across the surface in a unobstructed way, you know, so you don't get pushed in and pulled out and so on. And this is 1964, so this was... No, this is actually, that's mis, mis, mistaken. That was, uh, I think that was 62. Again, I, and I was very influenced at that time by the ideas of minimalism. Uh, there was a friend of mine, um, Paul, Paul, well anyway, he was a minim minimalist painter, and, uh, uh, and also uh, uh, Ad Reinhardt. He was also an influence on me at that time. Oh, I can, I can see yeah. that. So, I mean, because all, all, all of these painters who like to paint surfaces that had no obstructions in them. So I wanted to be a landscape painter who was a minimalist at the same time. And this is the kind of painting that came out of that, or this big one in here. And at the same time, I was also, um, you know, I was, I was friendly with Tvokov, uh, sure. abstract expressionist painter. And, um, um, uh, and I like the idea of, of those very simple shapes. So that's where that's, this painting comes from. Then I was also very influenced by um, seeing a show of uh, um, Whistler's paintings. And Whistler also, in a way, was a, was a minimalist because he tried to make everything disappear in, into an overall atmosphere, mm -hmm. you know, especially in the nocturnes in his landscapes. And uh, I was living in Rome at the time. I went down to the river and I did uh, the Tiber. This is the other side of the Tiber with a bridge going across it, you know. But the whole thing in such a way 
that it, it presents again the idea of this unbroken surface of tex texture, you know. I mean, I didn't want people to first think about a bridge and so forth. I mean, I myself didn't want to think about it, you know. But uh, I was very influenced by an Italian, wonderful Italian painter named Morandi that everybody loves, even today. And Morandi um, used to make etchings that came from, from things he worked out on canvas, you know, with color. And he made black and white etchings from those. And that seemed to me to give me permission to do uh, all sorts of derivative kind of kind of work for my own work, you know, and um, made me. Well, I, I often remember when I've been um, in the studio that uh, I'll be admiring a painting, and you you will you will say to me, "Well, I want to keep that one because I think I want to I want to feed from it, use it to work on a." a another one, a larger uh, version. And then sometimes you also need a painting just to, to be, if you like a painting that you've done, you need to keep it around to help your morale. You know? <laughs> because, you know, you, you're not always so self-assured as you ought to be. You need the, uh, the, the support of, 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 of some, ev some evidence that, that you've done something right at some point, you know. So that's why I, I, keep, I keep a few paintings for my own uh, um, uh, archive, you know, in my studio. But Gerald came and, and he managed to uh, um, pull out a few of those paintings that I thought were my archive that, that are now hanging here. <laughs> He's a very convincing guy. Well, this was, I went back to, I went back to Italy and I, I won an, uh, a Fulbright scholarship, uh, uh, first to be in Milan. I had, by that time, I had a, a small daughter who was two years old, and she constantly had uh, respiratory problems because the, uh, um, you know, the air pollution in Milan is so terrible. I don't know if it still is, but it was then. I think it still is. And um, so we stayed there for, for like one season and then, then got out and, and, and took a, a, an apartment in Rome. And in Rome, I... Um, had a studio away from the apartment, and I had to walk across the Tiber to get to my studio. That's why some of those bridge paintings come from. And uh, in my studio, I made this this painting here, which, um, believe it or not, hung in the Nixon White House for a while. They borrowed it. They didn't buy it. They borrowed it. I think they thought better of it. It's too sloppy. It's too too, too nasty to be a Nixon painting, you know. <laughs> now, how, how does this painting of cypress trees relate to the one in the other room we looked at that's a little more formal and uh, yeah, yeah. structured? I think they're about, about the same time, really. Uh, it's because I've, I, I constantly try to keep a number of things going mm -hmm. at one time. Um, I've never thought much about um, uh, stop making a style or a, um, a pro making a consistent product, you know, that would make a, a, a sure. very coherent show, because I don't have to. I'm too talented for that, you know. <laughs> you're right. Well, you're also, um, I think, an, an all-over-the-canvas painter and an all-over-the-studio painter because I've, I've seen you go from one corner of a canvas to the next and then go to a, another painting. Oh, yeah, I like to keep a number of things going at one time because I get bored very quickly, you know, especially if a, a painting doesn't take shape and, and gets me angry at it. You know, after a while, I express my anger in the painting. If that doesn't make the painting take shape, and I put it aside and, and, and try to forget about it. But then a little later, you know, maybe months later, you turn it around and you see, well, there's one or two things that can lead you on to a, a, a new phase and, and, and you take it up again. So I, I keep, in general, I keep about a half a dozen paintings going at one time, many of them in, in, in totally different approaches. And, and different points of completion. Yeah, and of course, different points, yeah. I, like I say, in, in, in different states of undress. <laughs>